Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to update you on our teak deck repair process. Even though the ship is closed currently, we're still doing important restoration work on board, such as uh, replacing the teak wood deck. So, uh, we've already done a video like this previously. This one is just an update on the process, but let me remind you guys why the ship has a teak wood deck, what, what all is going on here. So, uh, we use teak because teak doesn't burn. We've tried to light some on fire with a blowtorch and we couldn't get it to ignite. Um, it does two things for us. One, it gives us a little bit of traction so we're not walking around on bare steel, which can be slippery when wet. And two, uh, the two inch thick teak provides us insulation. So the crew down below, which directly below us is mostly living and uh, birthing areas, that would heat up tremendously, especially in the South Pacific under the summer sun. I can tell you from experience, places where we have removed the teak radiate heat and cold down below depending on the time of year, but places that still have the teak are in good shape. Uh, so, initially the ship had two inch thick solid teak installed. And as that teak was damaged or rotted out, which it does every 20 years or so, it was being replaced with more teak. Uh, by the 1980s, modern American ships did not have wood decks anymore. In fact, the Iowa class battleships were the last wood deck ships in the fleet. Uh, so one, the expensive teak that we had to import from overseas wasn't available. And two, shipyard workers didn't have as much experience with it as they did before. So we're back here on the fantail, uh, on the opposite side from where we've been ripping up and replacing it. And uh, this is some of the wood that was replaced in the 1980s. Uh, you can see that uh, the caulk has completely failed in here. So it has started to collect dirt, which is growing uh, moss, grass, other things, which is further eating out what's inside of the wood. Uh, and it's allowing water to ingress. And the water gets under the wood, rots the wood, and then isn't getting sunlight to dry off. So it's also rusting the steel beneath us. Luckily, this is a battleship. The, the main deck that we're sitting on here is about an inch and a half thick of special treatment steel. So we've got some time before it wastes all the way through, but we don't want it to get to that stage. Now you might also be able to notice here that uh, this wood is not solid teak. So if you look up here, this, this stuff is good solid teak, but a half inch down, it's not anymore. Look, that's all sawdust at this point, uh, mulch. That was Douglas fir. In the 1980s, in order to save money, they used a laminate system. So rather than using two inches of expensive teak, they used a half inch of teak glued down on top of an inch and a half of very cheap American grown uh, Douglas fir. The teak is still largely intact. The Douglas fir underneath, not so much. For the past year, we've been working outside on the deck. Uh, we've had some experimentations that we've done along the way to get to this point. Uh, some of these are secretive, some of them are not. Um, we can show you the process and give you our advice. Um, we are still using a full bolt down method like the Navy did in the past. We're just improvising a little bit and cutting cost. They put about six to eight bolts in a board. We're doing six bolts in a half sheet of plywood. So the speed of welding and the cost of welding is way, way down. So hopefully that buys us a little more time because in a matter of five years, we are trying to cover the entire main deck and also repair and rehab anything else that is existing. So we're back aft. Uh, you got no because we're we're in a tent, um, and we set this up so that Jay can work even when it's cold because obviously a lot of these things uh, the 
epoxies and whatnot that uses can only they only work if it's a certain temperature so we put the tent up and we blow heaters in here when we need to um, so he can work but we are back aft right forward of turret three on the port side like where our quad 40 sits if, if you are familiar um, but so as we started back here the bits up front that were real chewed up you know it's gonna be five years before we get there so we have been patching up there as well it's gonna take time uh, like she said we set up a tent that was a big experiment we were able to work through january february and part of march and maintain almost 80 to 100 degrees inside of the tent so <laughs> depending on the day <laughs> yeah depending on the day um i'd say that experiment we did pass and i feel safe to say that if you can keep these things on the ground go for it it'll work um so in the process of gluing down the teak we went ahead and ripped down plywood and some half sheets and pre-drilled holes and this is actually what marks where we will so we go and drill a pilot hole down into the steel deck and mark out the six holes and then use this handy gun that somebody designed could tell you. you load in a stud and it actually has the weld inside put a porcelain ring over it and it fuses a nut to the deck so now you are able to take this and mold it right down into place. With that being said, we can cover a bigger square footage. So after bolting the deck in place, we're able to cover more square foot. And from there, we are actually making our wood ourselves. The Burmese teak is coming sanded on all four sides, rough cut from the assuming Burma. It's coming direct from there. We're putting what they call a hitting groove in there because the board is five and a half inches wide and we are trying to prevent cupping. So on the entire process we glue this down and bolt it and then we're actually gluing this down and putting hidden fasteners. We are using standard exterior screws going through the fake holes and into the deck clip as well. So if something were to fail later on from top, we still have side coverage and the glue. So we're hoping that we exceed the 20 year mark that this should cover, but that should hold it down and, and make it last that full 20 years. Even uh, on top of that, we are making our own plugs from any scrap boards that are cut this board right here will give me about nine plugs in the future and then we are taking the scrap of that and making our individual spacers as well so the recycled part of this we are throwing away nothing the guys are actually taking scrap boards home to turn pens if they can without cutting their fingers off so we'll try to be as resourceful as possible because it's cost a lot of money so we are outside here showing you a gusset plate, and this is the reason that we decided to go with the dirty gray plywood. Any place on the deck that we hit an obstruction is typically less than three quarters of an inch. So by switching to three quarter inch plywood, we're basically leveling the deck off at a fraction of the cost of using a ferry compound or any type of epoxy resin. And now we also have a faster way of anchoring boards, screws, whatever we decide to. Even 20 years from now, if the plywood is still in good shape, you have another solid surface to still work on. So that was the advantage of using the green green plywood around all the dozens. If you're interested in taking home a historic piece of the ship, uh, or if you're a woodworker, you like turning pens or making other things, you can even have modelers come and use uh, wood from this ship's deck to deck their models of the ship. You can buy pieces of teak like this, which we have ripped up from the deck in the process of replacing it. So all of this uh, is original material that was on the ship at some point during her career. Some of it dates back to World War II. Most of it's probably from the 80s. Uh, 
but you can buy it in a couple of different sizes. Uh, it's available online, and even though the ship is closed, we can ship this out to you uh, probably within a week or so of the order. Thanks for watching with us today, guys. Uh, if you would like to help support the museum while we're closed, check the links down below to make a donation. There is a way to designate your donation as just a general to the fund or to say, hey, I want to donate directly towards the Teak Deck Restoration, for which we're trying to raise something like $5 million over the next couple of years to do the whole deck. Uh, anyway, uh, check all of our social media content and uh, remember, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be posting new content daily across our platforms.